next item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 8987 in the name of John McAlpine on fairness for local television in Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I now, before I call on Joan McAlpine, I would further invite those uh, members who are leaving the chamber to do so quickly and quietly, as well as those who are leaving the public gallery. Joan McAlpine, seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, since this debate is about media matters, I should draw members' attention to my register of members' interests. I write a column for the Daily Record newspaper, which is owned by the Trinity Mirror Group. I'm delighted to be leading this debate today and thank everybody across the Parliament who signed the motion. And I would also like to thank Carnegie UK Trust for the briefing they provided today and for STV for working closely with me to make the debate possible. And I'd like to welcome um, members of STV and the University of West of Scotland who are in the gallery today to hear the debate. We're all familiar in this Parliament with the challenges of local news in the age of the internet. And in the last seven years across the UK, 242 local newspapers have closed completely and £400 million of advertising revenue has disappeared over that time. Yet the public value local news. As the Carnegie Trust briefing points out, it's a hub for citizens' engagement. It's essential to local democracy. It connects people to place and to each other. This is reflected in the fact that 73% of us believe our local media is the best medium for making us feel part of a community. So for this reason, we should welcome the arrival of the new channels, the new local TV channels. There was, of course, initial disquiet when the first licences in Scotland went to Glasgow and Edinburgh. And representing the south of Scotland, which is po poorly served by TV at the moment, uh, I had previously commented on the logic of that. And I know that the Cabinet Secretary, Fiona Hislop, also uh, raised her concerns about it at the time. However, having said that, I do warmly welcome the launch of STV Glasgow next week and STV Edinburgh later this year. The regulator Ofcom will soon invite applications for local TV stations in Aberdeen, Dundee, Inverness and Ayr, and they are also considering advertising a licence for Falkirk, so we could have Kelpie TV as well. <laughs> STV Glasgow will begin broadcasting on the 2nd of June, that's this Monday at half past six in the evening, and I was fortunate to visit their new studio on the Clyde a couple of weeks ago. It's built with a view over the river, taking in a pa panorama of the Finiston Crane, the Squinty Bridge, the Armadillo and the Hydro, and it looked really spectacular. And it will be from that panorama that the magazine show will be broadcast. There will be cookery featuring chefs from the city's restaurant. And I particularly welcome the inclusion of Tenement TV, which showcases local bands and bands visiting the city, because there has been no TV platform in Scotland for unsigned young brands for quite a while. And uh, this is an opportunity to develop talent. And it should also be noted that STV have created 26 new roles <coughs> with the new TV channel. Uh, Bobby Hain, director of channels at STV, has reported that advanced advertising sales for the new station have been buoyant, with city businesses attracted by the opportunity to reach a concentrated audience of 2 million at rates that are lower than the national level. So that's all good and we hope that it will be replicated when local TV licences are rolled out across Scotland. But the motion in the debate today is about fairness for local television and is focused on the need to give appropriate prominence on the electronic programming guides which have an important influence on what we watch. In England, local TV appears on Channel 8 of the Freeview Electronic Pro Backgammon Guide, but in Scotland it will be at number 23. This is because BBC Alba occupies that slot in Scotland. Now, I want to make it very clear here that BBC Alba has widespread support and that neither myself nor STV has any problem at all with them occupying that slot. The unfairness here is that according to the Communications Act 2003, the regulator Ofcom should oblige providers of the electronic programming guide to give a degree of prominence to public service channels. But there are lots of shopping, movie and entertainment channels that could be moved to accommodate local TV and that hasn't happened in Scotland. For example, ITV2, no one could argue that it provides a public service, yet it's on page one of the guide. You have to ask why and I think the answer seems clear. Digital UK, the industry conglomerate who provide the Freeview electronic programme guide, have the power here. 
but they act in the interest of the biggest players in the industry, like ITV and BBC. Digital UK have a policy which is supposed to favour public service channels, including those providing local TV, but in Scotland's case they have ignored their own guidelines. And perhaps even more worryingly, the regulator Ofcom does not interpret the Communications Act 2003 as demanding, uh, as giving them the power to demand that, uh, that public service channels get due prominence, and they refuse to intervene in this matter. A solution recently emerged, the proposal to move BBC Three online provides an opportunity to promote local TV in Scotland. I recently wrote to Digital UK asking them to support such a solution, but I was told that the BBC Trust has still to make a decision on BBC Three's future and they wouldn't comment until then. Of course, BBC is a major player in Digital UK, which controls the Electronic Programming Guide. So I was very worried to read of uh, hints coming out of the BBC that they would like to use this vacant slot for BBC Plus One, um, which again would stymie local television in Scotland. This has exposed a flaw in the legislation covering the whole of the UK. If the Communications Act can't enforce prominence for public service channels in Scotland, there is a danger that public service channels could lose prominence elsewhere in the UK. Now, the UK government appeared to recognise this and has announced that it will seek to bring new legislation forward to rectify it. But there's no timeline for that. And even if, even if legislation is brought forward, it will come too late to benefit the services that are being launched this year in Scotland. Now, of course, the outcome of the referendum could make this debate redundant by transferring re regulatory power over broadcasting from Westminster to this parliament. But I'm keen to reach a consensus in the debate, so I will not take that point any further. Whatever our po position on the Constitution, I hope, however, we can all agree that it's in the interests of democracy for local TV not to be disadvantaged. And I therefore hope that we can work together across the Chamber for the fairest possible outcome, not just in the commercial interests of broadcasters, but in the interests of build building strong local communities, enhancing civic engagement and strengthening local democracy. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now call on Chick Brody to be followed by Ken McIntosh. Up to four minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I apologise to the Chamber that I may have to leave before the end of the debate because we have friends from Northern Ireland uh, to meet. Uh, I'm delighted to speak in this debate today, uh, Presiding Officer, and congratulate my colleague, uh, Joan McAlpine, for bringing the debate forward. The fairness in broadcasting, I think we believe, go uh, hand in hand and applies as much to our national public broadcaster as it does to a local television. However, today I have regard to local television and indeed to the ever increasingly uh, reputable STV and commercial and local television. And as a member for the south of Scotland and indeed a resident of Ayr, I firstly welcome the issue of local television licences for Glasgow and Edinburgh and also the fact that Ayr is on the shortlist for the next round of licence distribution. I'm sure, Presiding Officer, you welcome that too. Uh, as I said in my speech on the 30th of January uh, last year, 2013, in this chamber, on a related matter, I said that the UK Minister for, responsible for broadcasting at that time, Jeremy Hunt, had indicated, and I quote, he wanted people to be able to watch television uh, that is truly relevant to them about what's happening where they live and featuring people they know. That is fair. At that time, no reason to believe it has changed, Ofcom asserted that 9 out of 10 adults consume local and national news and 75% rate local news and weather as personal and important uh, types of communication for them. Now, I welcome uh, the increased role that Borders TV is playing in this place in assisting and meeting the local needs and expectations. However, an expansion into more local television to meet the clear and stated needs uh, and expectations of which I spoke and to do so via these public service channels uh, are not in Scotland at least the lowest available uh, LCN logical channel numbers. It appears that the obligation to provide news and current affairs will be met with the relegation of Scotland's new local services lower down the electronic programme guide listings lower than shopping, music and movie channels. This uh, lack of prominence, which Joe McAlpine mentioned, this lack of primacy for 
local public service channels must be addressed. We are, of course, excited about the launch of uh, STV's Glasgow on the 2nd of June, albeit on Freeview Channel 26. That's 26. That's not high in EPG terms. But we do believe this will be another significant milestone in achievement by STV, but it should not be accompanied by a charter for remote control flickers. The quality of its output should have merited an LCN, a logical channel number, lower than that allotted, and therefore simultaneously a prominence consistent with customer demands. That is no less important as it will be in air in the south of Scotland as it is for Glasgow. Ofcom deny the provisions in section 310 of the Communication Act, provisions which, and I again quote, that Ofcom will have regard to the interests of citizens and the expectation of consumers. They should manage that expectation now and appropriately. Section 2.47 of the UK Department for Culture, Media and Sport in its July 2011 document, a new framework for local TV in the UK, says the government wants to achieve EPG prominence on free, free view, though acquiring a sufficiently high channel number. It goes on, the government hopes that this will be channel 8 in England and Northern Ireland, and another high number, another high number, the service for Wales and Scotland. This, it goes on, it says, must ensure that EPG providers give the listing and promotion of the programmes on public service channels an appropriate degree of prominence. I hope, and I repeat, 26 is not a low, num low number. I hope all of this is remembered when BBC Three is closed down in the autumn of 2015. Thanks so much. I now call on Ken McIntosh to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, President Officer. And can I also thank June McAlpine for bringing forward today's debate uh, and for securing this opportunity to discuss local television in Scotland. Can I also offer her Labour support uh, in trying to secure and ensure that uh, local television stations in Scotland uh, are not disadvantaged and are given the platform and the profile they need to succeed? Presenting officer, it's an exciting and uh, a challenging time for broadcasting in Scotland. Uh, the creation of new local television channels, the first of which will begin broadcasting on Monday, uh, offers all sorts of opportunities, opportunities for communities to express themselves, to share ideas and information and to offer a new perspective. I was sorry not to be able to join colleagues uh, in Glasgow just over a week ago at the launch of the STV services for Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, although not so sorry when I heard what happened to my East Renfrewshire colleague Jim Murphy MP. And for those who weren't there, the event uh, included a large and very heavy horse intending to look like the iconic statue of the Duke of Wellington, uh, complete outside Glasgow's Museum of Modern Art, complete with the parking cone on his head. And uh, the reason I know the horse was large and heavy was that it then stood on Jim's foot and wouldn't budge. Yeah. I believe, yes. I knew that would be applauded by some members of the... <laughs> applauded by members of the Labour Party too, I think. I, said, oh. I think it's what you call voting with your feet. But uh, anyway, horsey tails aside, uh, I think it is exciting that communities around Scotland are going to have a new source of local news and information. It could not come at a better time with the traditional print uh, news media in a state of some crisis and disarray. The Carnegie Trust have reminded us that 242 local newspapers have closed in seven years, and all but two of the UK's regional daily papers saw a year-on-year -year decrease in circulation in the last six months. Almost £400 million in print advertising revenue, as Joan McAlpine highlighted, is forecast to be lost from the newspaper market by the end of this year alone. Now, that's accompanied by the fact that all of us, and the younger generation in particular, are now accessing our news and information more and more through different media. Whether it be digital TV, social media, or other online sources, pictures and broadcast material have never been more important. And I, for one, am very hopeful that Scotland's new uh, local television programmes will provide a vital service, broadening the range of voices that we can hear, preserving local democracy and strengthening our communities. It's certainly not guaranteed, presenting officer, many of us will be familiar with the old Bruce Springsteen song, 57 channels and nothing on. But it is an opportunity I think that many Scots will grasp. If they are to do so, one of the problems they will undoubtedly have to overcome is that of where on the electronic programme guide viewers will be able to find their local station. As Joan McAlpine has described, across most of the UK, local TV stations will be found on Channel 8. 
Here in Scotland and in Wales too, they will be found on Channel 23. Now, I should say that is for good reason, partly, in that our Gaelic channel, BBC Alba, is on Channel 8, and in Wales, uh, that's taken by S4C. And before I go any further, uh, much as I do want a good slot for our new local television output, I certainly do not want to move BBC Alba. This is a very successful station, which is not just serving the needs of our Gaelic community and essential to the revival of the Gaelic language, but which is providing a much appreciated service to the whole of Scotland. The most recent figures show that BBC Alba has an average weekly reach of 750,000 viewers. But make no mistake, the slot you get on the electronic guide matters. An Ofcom analysis concluded, and I quote, that the evidence strongly supports the view that EPG positioning is likely to have a significant impact on a channel's performance. Based on this evidence, we consider that if a major digital entertainment channel suffered a significant loss of EPG prominence, this would be associated with a 10 to 20% drop in audience share on the Freeview platform and a 20 to 40% fall in audience share on the Sky and Virgin media platforms. It's my understanding that UK Digital is willing to move Scotland's local TV stations higher up the guide when slots become available. And in fact, in the interim period between when Joe McAlpine lodged this motion and the launch of the station, it has actually moved uh, our stations up from 26 to 23. So I certainly want to offer my support for that approach. I believe we should give these new stations every chance of success and a prominent position amongst our plethora of digital channels is one way of doing so. Can I conclude again by thanking Joe McAlpine for bringing forward today's debate. Many thanks. I call on Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Alex Ferguson. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Presiding Officer, and let me join others in congratulating John McAlpin and bringing forward this important debate. Uh, and uh, should I have to leave early for the conveners uh, group meeting starting uh, shortly, uh, my apologies for not necessarily hearing the whole of the debate. I'll look at it afterwards, that's for sure. Now, broadcast media, TV and radio, Spice tell me, employ something like 3,500 people. Uh, in Scotland. So a very significant industry. But more fundamentally, it's significant for the people who consume the product of that. One of the little things that gives us an insight into what the public wants is the circulation of the Press and Journal. The Press and Journal has a circulation roughly equivalent to the Herald and the Scotsman put together. And why is that so? And that is so because the P&J is essentially a paper rooted in local news. With outposts across the north and northeast of Scotland of journalists embedded in communities reporting on what's going on. In my constituency, there's a page and a half every day of news from my constituency in the P&J. So there is an appetite for local news, which the news stations absolutely play into. And I think that uh, the time for local television, as the cost of entry has shrunk to an entirely different level from that which it was uh, years ago, has come. So we mustn't allow this initiative to fail because of some essentially technical issues around achieving the right prominence. If Channel 7 is going to be available, then bluntly it should be allocated because we have a public service broadcaster in the East and the West and later in other parts of Scotland and therefore Ofcom should respond to their guidance and allocate it to there. Now, I think there's been a bit of a lack of imagination on the part of Ofcom in examining other ways of achieving this. Uh, at the moment, I, this week, for example, have come back, switched my telly on in my wee house down here, and it said, there are new channels available, you have to retune. So you press the retune button, three minutes later, it's retuned. Fascinating. But what it's actually done as well, and I've examined the, the behaviour on Sony, Panasonic, Samsung, Humax, and a pace box. Not comprehensive, just a sample. It always wipes your favourites. Because the reality is, if you could get your favourites on there, and when it retuned, it didn't interfere with them, then when you put your local channels on your favourites, and that came up when you selected the EPG, that'd be OK. But the reality is, every time you get a retune, it overwrites what you have chosen to make it work. Now, 
the software that's doing that and all these boxes is downloaded off the network, Ofcom could set regulations in place for the software as well as for the data content to the EPG and require that the providers of the software, which is after all in any event UK focused and specifically UK, so it's not about, you know, touching other international things, they could do that. So with a bit of imagination, you could get things to a different place. They could even require that you have little icons on your screen. So instead of just having a dozen stations on the first screen that you see, you actually had, let's just choose an arbitrary number, 26 of them, so that you could actually get it on the screen. So I think there's been a lack of imagination. The world is changing, it continues to change. I've just realized it's 20 years since I first published a website. There's a lot happening and there's a lot more to happen. Let's make sure we get a fair wind for this excellent local news-based initiative for which I'm sure there'll be great demand and get our local stations prominent in a way that the public can easily access and enjoy them. Many thanks. I'll now call on Alex Ferguson to be forward, followed by Gordon MacDonald. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I just start by, like others, congratulating Joan McAlpine on bringing this debate uh, to Parliament. I very much welcome the introduction of local TV and I'm delighted to see it come about. Um, I've always been very supportive of, of the benefits of local TV and I think it's right that we should, in the spirit of, uh, of, of um, consensus that Joan McAlpine referred to, I think it's right that we uh, commend the UK Government for, for bringing this forward and particularly... I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Rob Woodward and his team at STV for the achievements they've already had at STV and for having the vision to uh, back the introduction of local television here in Scotland. I think, it's, I think it's wonderful. That said, I share Joan McAlpine's original disappointment that um, Edinburgh and Glasgow were the first recipients of, of local TV, and I, I was a bit surprised when that announcement was made, for reasons I'll come to in a minute. But uh, I can understand it, uh, given... The populations of those two cities and my understanding that you need around about 100,000 people in the catchment area to make this work at this point in time. Um, but I look forward to seeing the, the whole thing being further rolled out. I understand that air is a, a, a possible option for the future and as a former Ayrshire man and certainly from your own perspective, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, I know you're keen to see that be brought about. You told me to say so and I'm happy to do so. Um, but if I could go back to a rather more parochial note um, uh, and the sort of reason for my slight surprise at the announcement of Edinburgh Glasgow, my, my enthusiasm for local TV is born out of the, well, really, uh, a fact that it, I think it ought to reflect the words of the Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop when she said in August 2011, Dumfries and Galloway and the Scottish borders are arguably, arguably the parts of Scotland most in need of local television. That was said here in Parliament, and I, I think I took part in that debate, if I remember rightly, and, and I absolutely agreed with that. Now, the situation, I think, has improved somewhat in the borders um, and Dumfries and Galloway of late because we have regained, um, effectively regained borders television, which had been removed from us, and, and I, I acknowledge Chick Brodie's recognition of that fact. Um, uh, uh, the, the local need that was there is now much better satisfied than was the case in 2011, but nonetheless, I think the Cabinet Secretary's statement was pertinent. Can I just finish, Presiding Officer, by, by saying um, uh, something about the electronic programming guide positioning, and I bow to other members' infinitely superior technical knowledge over mine. Um, and I can understand the concerns about it. I absolutely can understand those. But I, I just wonder, I don't think we should get too desperately hung up about local TV's position on the electronic programming guide. And I say that I, I have Sky Television and I regularly tune into BBC's 24-hour news channel. It's on channel 503. What draws me to it is the quality of the programming. And while I, I do understand the desirability of having a, a, a positioning of prominence, I would argue to a certain extent that the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. And if the quality of local television programming is good enough, I think people will manage to press three, two numbers rather than one if that's what it takes on, on the zapper to, to get into your program. If the attraction of watching that program is good enough because of the quality, I think that will be overcome. But that said, I absolutely recognise the strength of the arguments for EPG prominence. And if it could be moved higher up, 
uh, the list than it most certainly should be. So I'm pleased to take part in the debate and I congratulate Jeremy Calpine on bringing it forward. Thank you very much. And I now call on Gordon MacDonald, after which we'll move to the closing speech from the Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I also uh, thank my colleague John McAlpine in securing this debate. I too welcome the new STV local channels that are being launched in Glasgow and Edinburgh over the summer in conjunction with Glasgow Caledonian and Edinburgh Napier universities. ETV and GTV are the only new Scottish channels announced so far, but I understand that Ofcom will be advertising licences later this year for Aberdeen, Ayr, Dundee, Falkirk and the Inverness areas. These channels are necessary because we see so little of Scotland and Scottish culture on the existing public sector broadcaster, the BBC. BBC Scotland's local television original output for the year 2012-13, according to the BBC's own management review, was 778 hours, at the same time as Scottish licence fee payers contributed £320 million to BBC coffers. The new channels, ETV and GTV, will broadcast from 12 noon to midnight, seven days a week. A total of 4,368 hours each a year, over four times the total local television hours broadcast by BBC Scotland. What is even more remarkable is that the stations will now be operating on a fully commercial business model, having decided to reject the option of receiving funding from the BBC, who were hoping to purchase content from the Scottish channels as well as the UK-wide local TV network, to the tune of £5 million per annum for three years. STV Local, therefore, frees itself from having to provide the BBC access to its content, which it hopes will be able to attract its own revenue. In order to attract that revenue, I understand that the new channel will provide a mix of local content and programming, including news, current affairs, live shows, as well as quality acquired and archived programming. In developing the new channels, STV and their partners need to consider how they can address the totally inadequate reflection of our arts, music, entertainment and comedy, of which BBC Scotland only managed to broadcast 36 hours of in the year to March 2013. There is hope that they may indeed do that, as Bobby Hayne, Director of Channels at STV, stated last year at the Edinburgh Napier Media Monday event, Securing the local TV licence for Edinburgh means we will bring relevant and engaging content to the capital on a brand new platform. This is an exciting opportunity and one we are looking forward to delivering in partnership with Edinburgh Napier University. But this is not just about the opportunity to reflect our society on the wee screen. It is also about the opportunities they present to our students attending the partner universities. Edinburgh and Napier University students studying journalism will be given the opportunity to work and train in a live TV environment, while work experience will also be available to students studying other media courses. Edinburgh and Napier has a track record of producing top journalism and media graduates, and I'm sure that the students will prove invaluable to the community programming planned for ETV. But these channels, despite the best efforts of STV and Edinburgh and Napier, will only be successful if they attract an audience and, as a result, advertising revenue. This is where the problem lies, as Digital UK originally allocated the stations when the licence was awarded Channel 45 on the Freeview platform. They have now reconsidered and will move them to Channel 23, while across the UK, the other local channels being produced will broadcast on Channel 8. Surely the solution would be, now that the BBC is taking BBC 3 off the air, is to, be, is to move BBC Alpa to Channel 7, and then ETV and GTV could be broadcast on Channel 8 as well. The alternative use for Channel 7, BBC One Plus One, which by its very nature will be a repeat channel with no original content, with even very little of that emanating from Scotland um, is, is unacceptable. If this is allowed to go ahead unchanged, that highlights again 
why broadcasting in Scotland should be regulated by this Parliament. Thanks. Many thanks. And I now call on Minister Humza Yousaf to close on behalf of the Government. Seven minutes will thereby please, Minister. Thank you, <coughs> Presiding Officer. I, of course, uh, join other members in congratulating Joan McAlpine in securing this uh, debate and welcome the range of excellent uh, uh, contributions that were made. Uh, the subject is both important and timely. Uh, important because the two local stations that will start this year uh, in Glasgow and Edinburgh will, between them, have a potential audience of some four-fifths of Scotland's population. Uh, timely, because as we've been hearing from other members, STV Glasgow uh, will start broadcasting in just a few days' time. On Monday, uh, the 2nd of June, I was also uh, not at the launch. I was uh, literally sent to Coventry. Um, but uh, my, my, my sympathy, uh, I do have sympathy genuinely for, for, for Jim Murphy. The only reason why I applauded the horse is because I've seen him play football, and anything that slows him down is probably a good thing. But as a member of the Scottish Parliament uh, for, the, for the Glasgow region, uh, and coverage, of course, will extend uh, much beyond even that region. I'm particularly pleased to see uh, the new station get underway. Presiding officer, I was reflecting uh, over the weekend's uh, terrible news and the terrible news of last week of the fire that, took, uh, that ravaged uh, the Macintosh building, part of the Glasgow uh, School of Art, and how something that's particularly small and, and local can have uh, uh, repercussions that are uh, local, but also national uh, and simultaneously international too. I'm very grateful, I should say, at this stage uh, to the good work of the Fire and Rescue uh, Service in Scotland for tackling that blaze. But I'm sure that the new STV Glasgow service will perhaps want to cover uh, that Glasgow School of Arts uh, building's journey uh, to recovery. Uh, this seems to me a good example of a story that can be uh, broadcast and uh, given coverage in a lot more depth by a station like STV Glasgow, a real opportunity to bring a, a unique dimension uh, to television uh, broadcasting. So I look forward to STV Glasgow's beginning, uh, beginning their broadcast next week and to STV Edinburgh uh, later on uh, in the year. Uh, looking ahead, there is a possibility, uh, as we know, as many other members have commented, uh, of uh, further local television stations. Uh, the intention uh, for television franchises in Aberdeen, uh, Air Dundee, Falkirk and uh, in Inverness at some point uh, later this year, implying a start date perhaps of 2015-2016. Uh, I do say that there's a, a, bit, a bit of regret uh, from our perspective of the Scottish Government uh, that the model of an English uh, language television channel for Scotland uh, with local outputs uh, as recommended by the Scottish Broadcasting Commission in 2008 and endorsed of course unanimously by this Parliament uh, has not been followed. Uh, nevertheless, the increased coverage that is offered by local television under the current model uh, is to be welcomed. I'm certainly keen to see the new stations prosper and from what I've seen from STV's uh, local coverage, right the way through to the STV Glasgow app, which I have on my phone, uh, right the way through to the flagship political programme Scotland Tonight, which has uh, regionalised news. I think uh, they have stolen the march on uh, local programming, and I think it will be a, a huge success. Uh, the, the, the biggest uh, key to achieving success, as Alex Ferguson said, will absolutely be the quality uh, of uh, the programmes. I'm confident uh, about that. And as I've mentioned, STV has, has a strong record uh, as a broadcaster, but also understanding uh, localism in news uh, too. Uh, I would say, though, uh, particularly in the beginning, uh, when uh, the station uh, is in its early uh, stages and early phases, when people don't quite know the level of the quality they're experiencing, uh, that is why the prominence in the EPG will be uh, of, of immense uh, importance indeed. Um, programming uh, will see a headline uh, for STV Glasgow, will see a headline two hour. Uh, evening show, the Riverside show, from 6.30pm uh, each weeknight. The background, the panoramic background, described well uh, by Joan McAlpine. Uh, other programming will also uh, reflect Scotland's diversity, uh, showing both the popular series uh, of some years back, uh, Take the High Road, uh, but also for different communities uh, in, in Glasgow and across Scotland, actually. A recent series from Poland to be screened uh, in Polish, uh, Days of Honour, set in Second World War. So I believe that STV Glasgow in particular has the capacity to attract audiences. Realistically, though, uh, as I was saying, especially at the start-up, uh, that can only be at least eased by the relative, uh, relatively high position on the electronic programme guide. Uh, that would accord, as Ken McIntosh was saying, with the basic principles uh, set by Ofcom for the EPG. Uh, that includes prominence uh, for public service broadcasters. Uh, we share, I think, the entire chamber's uh, dissatisfaction uh, the present channel slot uh, number 23 while recognising uh, 
as Ken McIntosh said, that there's been some movement in the correct direction. We would urge uh, Digital UK uh, and the powers that be to further move in that direction uh, to give the station the prominence it rightly deserves. Uh, John McAlpine has mentioned in a previous motion uh, to this Parliament that there's a potential opportunity uh, with uh, BBC Three and the intention of the BBC executive to move BBC Three to a purely online uh, basis, thus freeing up that Channel 7 slot. Uh, so there may well be uh, opportunities uh, around that uh, as well. The Cabinet Secretary for Culture uh, and External Affairs pressed the case uh, for greater prominence uh, for local uh, television in Scotland. She pressed that case with Digital UK, uh, which we know allocates uh, the EPG uh, guide uh, as far back. Uh, she pressed this case in May 2012 and will continue uh, very much uh, to make that case presiding officer. For the public generally, I believe that the case will be made uh, above all by the programming that STV uh, Glasgow and STV Edinburgh offer. I think it's uh, a great model uh, and as Gordon MacDonald uh, rightfully emphasised in his own contribution, bringing in universities, giving students a uh, real break and broadcast media, something that they struggle. I know many journalist students, friends uh, of mine that have really struggled to get into that, uh, into that uh, media. Uh, and so this will give them that fantastic opportunity. And with all of that put together, I'm in no doubt uh, that these channels uh, will fulfill the public service broadcasting mission to inform, uh, to educate uh, and to entertain. And I look forward to experiencing that for myself uh, when STV Glasgow begins broadcasting next Monday. Who knows, presiding officer, they may even have me on their show at one point. Thank you. <coughs> I'm sure your comments will be noted, Minister. Um, I thank you all for taking part in the debate, and I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30. <laughs>